Hey, what's up guys? This is your pharmacist Sidra and welcome to my channel, Ask Your Pharmacist. So today's video is going to be about weight loss pills. This is a multi-million dollar industry. We have over-the-counter and prescription weight loss meds. So do they actually work? In this video, I'm going to fact check some of the weight loss pills and give you my opinion on what works and what does not. So keep watching. For those of you who are looking to lose or maintain weight, I'm pretty sure you've been browsing around and looking for some magic pill. Don't we all secretly wish that there was an exercise in a pill that would shed some extra weight? Well, if there is one, take my money and sign me up. But unfortunately, there is very little evidence that such magic diet pill exists and it'll make you lose or maintain weight for a significant amount of time. I get it, for those who want to lose weight, diet supplements seems like a magical solution. But you've got to be very careful about what you ingest in the form of pills. Because the manufacturers of these diet pills make extravagant promises about their products and some of them can actually have harmful effects on your body. And here's why I say that. Dietary supplements do not require FDA approval before being sold to public. So it's easier for unsafe ingredients to find their way into the magic diet pills. And some diet pills actually contain vitamins, laxatives, or even stimulants like amphetamines, which will curve your appetite for a short amount of time, but could be habit forming. And literally the side effects due to the stimulants in the diet pills are not worth taking the risk because stimulants can increase your risk of heart attack and stroke. And some diet pills actually contain diuretics and caffeine, which cause water loss. And after taking these pills, initially, yes, you may see lower numbers when you step on the scale, but this is not because of the true fat loss, you guys. This is just the water loss, which will return. And keep in mind, extreme water loss due to these diet pills can cause dangerous dehydration. And lastly, the long-term weight loss requires a change in your eating pattern and exercise. So don't fall for these diet pills. These are really temporary and do not actually show much effect. And if someone actually claims to help you lose weight without following a healthy diet pattern or exercise or claim to help you lose 30 pounds in 30 days, Trust me guys, these do not work. Think no further and just toss these diet pills into the garbage right away. And okay, for a minute, even if we assume that it does work, then just imagine taking weight loss pills forever is not sustainable. Once you stop them, you'll be back to your initial weight and poor diet habit. So what exactly is in the weight loss pills which can have harmful effects? See, most over-the-counter weight loss supplements may contain vitamins, uh, minerals, enzymes, uh, herbs, or some other magic ingredients. But let me bust some myths about these magic ingredients and tell you the truth. Now, let's say um, ingredients like ephedra, which is a very common ingredient in the weight loss medications. Now, ephedra is a stimulant, which yes, I agree, all stimulants can curve the appetite, but they will come with the risk of heart attack and stroke. FDA has actually banned ephedra because it's too dangerous to take in any dose as a supplement. Now, there's a myth that bitter orange is safe for a substitute for ephedra. Well, let me tell you this. Bitter orange contains synephrine, which is similar to ephedrine, which is a primary active ingredient of ephedra, but it has its dangers like ephedra. And the results you're likely to see from bitter orange are literally not worth the risk. Like you can get arrhythmias, a heart attack, and stroke with the use of bitter orange. Lately, there's a lot of hype about the ingredient Garcina Cambogia, which uh, comes in the products like Hydroxycut and Plexa Slim. Now, it's supposed to suppress the appetite and decrease the number of fat cells that your body makes. And though it is considered fairly safe, however, there is no evidence that it actually helps with the weight loss. But the studies have actually shown that its excessive use has been linked to liver problems. So the bottom line, are they pharmacists approved? No, because honestly, the benefit is not worth the risk associated with them. Then we have the green tea supplements, which are readily available in the market. Yes, green tea extract may promote weight loss, 
but taking a green tea supplement or drinking a cup after cup of green tea itself isn't going to produce a significant or lasting weight loss and any effect that you see from green tea is probably due to the caffeine and caffeine does boost your metabolism curves appetite because it doesn't has a lot of those calories so helps to keep your fast going if you do intermittent fasting like myself which by the way i am a big fan of intermittent fasting that does help lose weight so when you are fasting taking caffeine will help reduce the number of calories you intake but you have to put in some kind of effort in the form of exercise and good eating habits to get the lasting results. Now, the question that most of you might be asking that are there any safe weight loss medications? And what about the prescription medications? Are they safe or are they FDA approved? Well, see the prescription weight loss medications come in two basic categories, appetite suppressants and fat blockers. Now, appetite suppressants, as the name indicate, are designed to curb the hunger and in turn, help you lose weight. FDA so far has not approved any over-the-counter or OTC appetite suppressants, but there are some which you can get as a prescription only, like Saxenda, Contrave, uh, and Cusmia. But before you consider asking your doctor for a prescription for one of them, I want you to take some time to learn about these medications and see how they work. Let's say for example, Saxenda. Now Saxenda suppresses the appetite by acting on a hormone in our stomach. It is available as a subcutaneous injection. And a fun fact, it's marketed under the brand name Victoza to treat diabetes. So basically it is a diabetes medication and as a side effect, it causes weight loss, which is the kind of side effect don't you wish all the medications have? Then we have Contra, which is another appetite suppressant. It's a combination of two medications, bupropion, which is an antidepressant, and naltrexone. Now, this medication primarily works by affecting the reward system of your brain, meaning eating certain foods that normally will make you feel good will no longer feel good, and hence, food intake is lesser. This medication also works on hypothalamus to control the appetite. Now, from a pharmacist perspective, I think this medication does help if used for a couple of months. I don't recommend using it for more than uh, six to seven months. However, it is available as brand name only, hence comes with a hefty price tag and don't expect your insurance to pay for it. So my tip here that if you do decide to get this medication, then either look for a manufacturer coupon or ask your doctor to write two separate prescriptions for bupropion and naltrexone, which will be cheaper as they are generic. And also most likely your insurance will pay for them. Phenteramine is another appetite suppressant very commonly prescribed for weight loss. But remember, it's a stimulant, so do not use it if you have any heart issues or high blood pressure because a lot of people get a raised heart rate after using this medication. And that shakiness and feeling of weakness after taking a fenteramine is not very fun for a lot of people. If so, if you do get this side effect of shakiness or raised heart rate, what I recommend is start with um, using half the tablet of whatever the dose is prescribed. Uh, start with low dose and gradually increase it for your body to get used to the medication and that would help prevent the side effect. I recommend not using fenteramine for long term. I would say no more than three to six months because this medication is just helping to curb your appetite and use it just to kickstart your weight loss. You can't depend on it for long term because one, it could be habit forming and also your body will kind of get resistance from the medication. So after like six to eight months, the medication will no longer show its effect. All right, so now let's talk about the uh, fat loss medication. You may have heard of Orlistat or Eli, which is available over the counter, and that is actually uh, FDA approved to treat obesity. Now the prescription version of the same medication, just a higher strength, is marketed by the name Xenical. And this medication is not an appetite suppressant, it is a fat burner. It helps with the fat reduction. This medication works by preventing an enzyme called lipase because of which your body does not absorb a portion of fat from the food you eat. Now, does this medication work? Truth be told, yes, but not as much as you might hope for. 
Plus there are some serious and kind of gross side effects from this medication like fatty oily stools with foul smell. It's a fat blocker and does not let any fat absorb in your body so you may become deficient of your fat soluble vitamins which are vitamin A, uh, D, E and K and these vitamins are pretty essential for your overall health. So be watchful if you do decide to take this medication. I recommend that you take your vitamins, essential vitamins, not with the medication, space them about three to four hours apart before or after the medication, just so you're not deficient of these important vitamins. I'll put the link of my favorite vitamins for you in the description, so don't forget to check that out. So yeah, these are your prescription options, which by the way are not magic pills in any way. They are approved to be used only if your body mass index, BMI, is 30 or greater. And guys, they will not work if you use them alone. You've got to have healthy diet and exercise along with these medications. And since there are side effects associated with them, I recommend definitely check with your doctor and weigh the benefits versus risks. And again, I would emphasize if you do end up getting prescription for any of these weight loss medications, remember using them just to kickstart your weight loss. Do not use them for more than 6 to 12 months, mainly because of the side effects and risks associated with them. And also, your body will get used to these medications after some time, and you will reach a plateau phase, at which point the medication is going to have no benefit, but will only continue to give you the side effects. Also, you're making your body dependent on these medications, because you know, once you stop these medications at some point in your life, your own body's metabolism will just forget to function because it's just so used to of being dependent on these medications. Just remember, the best and sustainable way to lose weight is only by lifestyle modification. You must watch what you eat, try to intake good calories, more greens, take proteins to build muscle, and don't forget to hydrate. I don't recommend cutting corners by using diet pills and worst case, if you need to use them, just use them to jumpstart. Well, that's my pharmacist recommended candid feedback for you. Let me know in the comments what you think, which route would you take to lose weight, weight loss pills or lifestyle changes. For me personally, I definitely adjusted my lifestyle, made some good changes and because of these lifestyle changes, I lost over 30 pounds in 3 months. And if you're interested to find out how, then watch this video. And hey, don't forget to share this video to spread awareness and subscribe now so you don't miss on any of my videos on health and pharmacy. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.